play. So we'll see. Just a moment. Once they get, once they do get the green light here. Turn one stomping ground from Jason. Now the big thing here between these decks is, you know, the Green Air Monsters deck is a very different deck when it has mana acceleration to, as opposed to when it does not. So see if this is still in character to get the ball rolling, and it is. So that's a big deal here because now you can take the initiative back since he's on the draw. Yeah, he really needs either Elvish Mystic or Sylvan Carrier too because the deck doesn't really have a lot going on three mana as well. It's really only four mana where the powerful stuff happens. So a mana accelerant critical. Fogel with a very spell heavy hand. He has a couple of copies of Rapid Hybridization and a gate in his hand as well. Let's see what this is. That's a Miscutter Hydra. Things are going to get tough for him right away. So an attack here for three with the hasty green creature is going to put Fogel down to 17. Yeah, we've seen Jack in a couple of sideboard games on camera now go into a pretty reactive shell in a variety of matchups. So I'm curious to see exactly the extent to which he's gone into a defense first plan. Jason's going to tick on up, and so Jason's going to untap. We'll see what he's able to find. Thassa, only two blue devotion symbols away from becoming the monster that it is. And I'm curious to see. I think Jason has another miscounter Hydra in his hand, so if he has an untapped mana, he can just take care of Jace right now. Really set Jack behind. This card is interesting because it's obviously very, very good against this deck. You see it looks like Miscutter is going to come into the red zone. See where it's going to go. If it's going to go towards Jason, it is going to go towards Jason. So it's going to go down to three after the trigger. But it is beatable from the mono blue deck, which is kind of a crazy thing to say, as here's a Pelucranos World Eater. Yeah, you can fly over it or just overpower it. And I think you can get yourself, obviously, in situations where, you know, it's going to be the lethal attack and you can jump off of the Mutable and get the job done. But it is, uh, it is annoying and problematic. It's definitely not game over, but it's among the better cards you can be playing against Mono Blue. And it's the type of card that also Mono Blue can't really adapt to. It just has to say, okay, that's a thing in play right now yeah. to work through this. Chase is going to tick up. Looks like maybe we got a Night Veil Spectre here. We do. So Thos is on, and Thos is coming in to the red zone. Five power creature. Doesn't use the unblockable, as there's no reason to. Plukernos, if it wants to block, I think Fogel would be very happy with that, as he's going to pass the turn back to Barhaus. So a very reactive hand. He can definitely finagle through this Pelucranos and possibly other creatures that Jason has, but he is at risk of losing. You know, if he loses Devotion, then his hand doesn't lead him to any place productive. Yeah. What do we have here? That's a Domri. I imagine this is worthy of a negate. Yeah. This is this is interesting because Fogel has a negate and he also has a rapid hybridization in his hand, so he can actually kind of blow out the fight. Well, no, not if it, not if Jason goes through Miscutter Hydra into like yeah, if he goes Miscutter Hydra into Nightvale Spectre. Yeah. So you know, I mean, what he can do here is you know he rapid hybrids his own creature in response, and then the Miscutter Hydra actually isn't a very good attacker at that point because you have a 3-3 green creature to play. Well, you're, at that point, you're committed to losing Jace or chump blocking the Pelucranos. I mean, this just... Yeah, I mean, it's not great. Looks like we might see maybe trying to trap him here. Yeah, Miscutter in this. Yeah, this is just, you know... I guess if he's committed to chump blocking, it makes some sense, but... I think I might be with you on this one where negating may have just been better here. Maybe he missed the fact that, you know, he won't be able to rapid hybridization the creature that Jason controls in response. Because yeah, now he's going to rapid hybridization this in response to the fight. So the fight's not going to resolve. Fogel's going to get a 3-3. Three, three. Devotion's going to be off here. I see if Lucanos is going to get in the red zone, because it, it, Lucanos should rumble on over to Jace now, right? Oh, for sure. Depending on the contents of his hand, he may actually be willing to trade the Miscar Hydra to ensure that the Jace dies. Yeah. Because then your thought, the thoughts is down to one devotion, and, you know, Jack Seems hasn't like shown no much enough ability to advance his board. Decisions, decisions. Yep, it's time to jump block may have been better off negating there, I think, as you mentioned. 
I guess also the thing is, if you're not going to negate, then when are you going to negate? Because you're, you know, you're kind of committing yourself to leaving up two mana for the entire game, where I don't think you want to actually do that. Yeah. Let's see what the draw here was for Fogel. Looks like it's another copy of Thassa. So now Jace is probably going to have to take down. And now, uh, and Jace, Jace taking down in turns that Miscutter Hydra kills it unless Jack is willing to chump block with a mutable. Yeah. That all depends on what Jace is going to turn over here, too. Yeah. Plays a huge role in this game. And Fogel Scanner now, he has an additional Thassa, which is basically a dead card and a gate and another copy of Rapid Hybridization. And so Jace is going to take down. There's an island. There's a Master of Waves. And there's a Frostburn Weird. Master Waves is very good here, of course. Hey, Master is good. But the problem here is, like, Frostburn actually turns yeah. on Thassa. I think that might be more important here because I think his actual avenue to victory is Thassa and just, like, going, you know, Thassa unblockable attack, Thassa unblockable attack, and just kill him that way. Sure, that's, I mean, that's tough to tough to fight through with that with Domri and Pelucranos, but I guess he has Rapid Hybridization to break up some tricks and... Yeah, especially when like, I don't think I don't think you can actually. I mean, I suppose you can take Master here. I don't think you're in love with it because you can take Master, put Master into play, leave a blue mana open, and then if Jason's you know tries to activate the Monstrosity on Pelucranos before it actually resolves, you Rapid Hybridization because Pelucranos actually has something to play when Monstrosity resolves for its ability to take effect, so you can maybe trap him that way. Yeah. I'm not a huge fan of pairing the land with the expensive spell. I'm not a fan of that either. I think I think it should be Master Waves on its own. Even if you think that, you know, it's possible the most valuable card in the stack is the Frostburn Weird, that just seems like an awkward awkward thing to hand, Jack. The big thing here, too, is that you, know, you don't know if Full Glass Iconic Rift in his deck after sideboard, but you're certainly bringing one land closer to it for right. an overload. Either way, the decision was made. Four Elementals are going to come into play. I'm going to pass the turn back. Now, if you're Bahas, you do have to, uh, you do have to tread pretty lightly here. Yep. A lot of risk here. I think you have to think that, okay, there's probably something up. I mean, he does have Miscutter Hydra that can finish off the chase here and push Jack's Devotion down a little bit further. But you definitely have to feel like something is up with your Pelucranos. Well, okay then. What's Magma Jack going to target? I think this is inside of Jason's upkeep yep. he's doing this to set up his draw and possibly set up Domri as well. You're targeting Jace. So now Devotion is off for Thassa. I don't think he could afford to negate that because he needs to leave up Rapid Hybridization. So he just yep. has to let his Jace go. You see him play a Blood Crypt on tap, I believe. Blood Crypt is in his, one Blood Crypt is in his deck to turn on the other side of Flesh Blood. Mm -hmm. Feels like kind of a free roll. Well, he just took two, so it's not that free. That feels free. <laughs> <laughs> it feels free. So let's see if we'll see a monstrosity activation or not. I mean, Jason can tell that something's up. I would, yeah, I mean, I think he knows that there's trying, kind of being a trap set here. Again, it's so easy for us here in the booth to just know that, hey, don't do that. You're going to regret it if you do. Yep, so there's your monstrosity activation. And Jack's going to take a look at that. And again, monstrosity only happens if the creature's in play once it resolves. So if Fogel does kill this rapid conversation, that's what he's going to do. Monstrosity will not resolve. He'll get to keep his Master of Waves. So that's what's going to end up happening. I feel like Jason still needs to be attacking with Miscutter Hydra here because of that's on Jack's side of the table. Jack can turns, controls the terms of combat in terms of making stuff unblockable. So since Jason's best attacker and blocker cannot block, it basically needs to attack. This was a pretty brutal turn for Jason. And yeah. it just goes to show you, the Blue Devotion deck is pretty slippery, I, I guess is the word I would use to describe it. Has a lot of tricks, 
in a lot of ways to seize tempo and initiative from a player who looks like they're in pretty firm control of the game. Now that said, you know, Jaxel has work cut out for him. That miscutter Hydras gives Jason some, some game here. He probably needs to commit some resources to killing Domri next turn to prevent Domri allowing Jason to fight the Master of Waves, but for as far behind as Jack was a couple turns ago, this is a pretty impressive about face. And now all Jason does is just pass the turn back. Yeah, I feel like he needs to get in with his miscutter Hydra there. Beautiful's gonna go to the bottom here for Fogel and take a draw. It's an island, so not of much help there. I and mean, Fogel's hand is actually pretty poor right now. That's the issue here for him. Even though he did kind of get a blow out there with the rapid hybridization, the big issue here is that his hand is negate another copy of Thassa and an island. Yeah. He's not doing too much. How much going on? Now, he can work down that Domri, which is a step in the right direction because Master Waves can make, as you mentioned, an elemental or Master itself unblockable. And I think he's really got to start, you know, making some creatures unblockable and get some damage through here. Yep. You know, he's got to, I think he's got to pick up the aggression right now. He's ahead as far as light totals are concerned. It's 17 to 13 in favor of Fogel. And he's got to close this game out because every draw set that, that kind of goes on here for Jason, it seems really scary. Yeah, of course. Jack is all in on this Master of Waves right now. And I guess he's on the opinion. He wants to leave up mana to be able to cast Negate. And he's been doing that for the, over the course of the, the entire game. So, it, you know, it... It, it's sound with his play pattern. It's been consistent with what else he's yeah. doing. And Dalmry is a, especially a spell that could just blow him up right now, so. We so. shall see what Jason is able to add. Looks like he's got a Mortars over there. That's another one that Negate takes care of. That's pretty good. Obviously, the Mortars isn't going to be particularly great in this situation because they can't kill Master Waves, but the Overload on it will be. All right, he says, hold on just a second. You see his hand? Man, his hand is really good. It's got a Skylash or another Mist Cutter over there, too. His hand is really good in this matchup. Wow. Thassa plus Master Waves. I yeah. Mean, it, it works around a lot of Jason's tools. I think Fogel's deciding if he wants to chump block with a Muta Vault. Uh, I don't. Mm, this is risky. Yeah, his creature will. I, I actually, I, I take it back. That's actually not a risky block because yeah. it's a three-three. Because the master actually completely missed it, and I think Jason did too. He was thinking it was just a two-two. So it's actually a really good block by Fogel. There. Ooh, okay, that'll turn things around. A scavenging use. Scavenging use not bad here. Again, another thing that basically requires Jack to use Thassa activations to attack through it. Take a draw. It's going to go to the bottom from Thassa Scry. So here's the real card. It's another island. Just can't find any real action. That being said, this awesome Smash and Rose might just be good enough to get it done. Yeah. Pretty crazy. Well, it's a pretty good card. It's a good one. Jack again, holding up negate mana. All right, so some damage is going to come across here with the Master of Waves and the Elemental Token. Jackson going to go down to seven. See an ooze activation at the end of the turn. So up to eight. You know, for Jack's sake, I hope he does find something to do with this uh, with this negate. I hope he does find something to counter. <laughs> He's been holding on to that thing for dear life over the course of this game. I really hope he counters something awesome with that thing. Well, there's well, the think, six mana for the mortars. I, so. think, I, I think it overloaded mortars, leading to a lethal attack. That's not a shabby. That's not a shabby negate. Yeah. I think you can be pretty pleased with that. Yeah, that one's okay. Two 
two, three, four, five. Yep, he's going to cast Mortars, I think. Yeah, that's going to get overloaded. And I think Jack is I know, going to it, quickly negate this. I know I know. Jack's been clutching on to that <laughs> negate for dear life, but I have to imagine this is good enough. <laughs> You're going to counter something. Do you hear me? Yeah. I'm going to counter something with this negate. You can't take it with you. Yeah, no matter okay. what you say, I'm countering something with this. So now, you know, this leads Jack to a spot where a land is lethal. As I think he has land in his hand, right? No, he has a Thassa. He has Thassa, right, right, right. With that attack, yeah, he gets he can make three unblockable and two blockers, so he needs to ha find either something to turn Thassa off, potentially, or a land yep. for lethal. That's miss number one. I think that's miss number... Is that miss number two? Yeah, it's a Tide Binder. That do it? No, it doesn't turn... No, uh, so doesn't it's, turn yeah, it's two off. mana. It, it basically converts two mana into one less blocker, which is already an exchange he has through Thassa. Yep. So oddly enough, that is not... Not the draw he's looking for. And the gate was so good. Let's see if he's going to tap down here. Scavenging news, you got to go. And he says, Master's unblockable. Attacks with everybody. So there's one blocker. Yeah, so he's got it, right? Because Master's unblockable. Yeah, 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 yeah so he's good to go. Right. Okay. All right. That's going to do it. Jack Fogel with Mono Blue Devotion. He ends up 8 and 2. 27th place on our leaderboard. That'll get some extra open series points his way. Not a top eight berth for him, but still a good weekend nonetheless. Defeats Jason Barhaus. Two games to one. You see Jack kind of shrug his shoulders. I finally got by the gate. Exactly what I wanted to do. And able to attack for a lethal. So Very congratulations to Jack. As we're going to bring it back to the booth here, my friends. Because that